Hello all. So, here on a nice, lovely, foggy morning here in San Francisco. And above the fog, it is so smoky you couldn't see 10 miles. But I'm just not here to talk about that. We're going to talk about peak oil. Oh, let's go over the board. So I wanted to take for an example here in the U.S. how peak oil has already happened. About 2016 on the fracking peak oil. So the biggest fields here in the U.S. of course is the Bakken or Bakken. I'm not sure exactly the right pronunciation. They have hit peak oil. You can see the black line here showing that in 2016 they hit peak and it is now dwindling. Now how do we know that? Because the oil companies aren't saying that. Well you can tell by the information they put out. So you can tell by the wastewater that is pumped out with the oil. If you get more water than you do oil and the water keeps getting more and more and the oil gets less and less, then you know you're at the peak especially when it comes to fracking. So in 2015 there was 16 percent water with oil. 2016 it was 18 percent, 2017 it was 32 percent, and 2018 so far this year it's 38 percent. That's a huge increase in water. So oil and water production 2015 34.4 million barrels of oil. 2015 also saw 39.8 million barrels of wastewater pumped up as well. 2018 so far this year we've seen 33.8 million barrels of oil and 46.8 million barrels of water. Here is a graph showing these two issues. That's oil, that's water. That's 2018. But that's not all. So the U.S. shell producers have a soaring debt because there just isn't any money yet. Their interest rates are rising. 16 of the top U.S. oil producers have a five billion dollar interest payment due in 2018. In 2017, for example, this company posted a loss of 456 million dollars in 2017. The interest they paid was 932 million. This will mark the end of the U.S. energy independence forever. And here's another problem down here. As we're seeing, shale producers are their own worst enemy because they're trying to steal each other's oil. Now what happens when one company drills underneath another one's fracking is that, that it will leak from one to the other, lowering the pressures in all of these cavities and all this and part of this. So the oil producers are getting nothing but a bunch of water because there isn't enough pressure to bring the oil, the heavy fracking oil, up to the surface. This is just beginning and they say this is going to become a nightmare for frackers because they will undermine all of this and the land will subside. Now whether the land will subside in a great big kunk or small little subsidences, we just don't know. So there's a lot of oil people out there will say that uh, there's no such thing as peak oil, that fracking will always save the day. No, it won't. It's coming to an end. Fracking in the U.S. is dying out. Well, other countries are just starting it. You can't imagine the nightmare you're going to have with the poisonous air, the polluted water, the pipelines that are spilling all over the land, and people don't seem to give much thought to it other than a few. The Dakota Access Pipeline heroes are still fighting in court over that battle. Everyone has to get involved one way or another. The best thing is just don't use oil or oil products such as plastic. Try and find an alternative such as hemp or paper or cotton to uh, carry things in instead of plastic bags. As far as transportation, good old bicycle or walking or car share. Those are all good ways. Taking public transportation is another good way. But I suspect that the oil producers will find a way to keep producing on and on. Far less oil and far more water. And there's one other problem we have to think about. Where are they putting all this waste water? Ah, the poor planet. Anyway, we appreciate all the last comments. They were good. All the ups and the downs and the new subscribers. And I think that everyone should go back and watch the video that I have in the links on the last video. And until next time.